Hello and welcome to a discussion with. I'm Brett Poirier and today's guest is someone you're all going to recognize, especially if you're a uh, familiar here in New England. It is Super Bowl champion Jonas Gray. Thank you so much for coming coming into the studio today. You're a new resident here in Medfield, mm -hmm. and, and welcome to welcome to the community. Thanks for having me, Brett. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. So obviously, you you could have landed anywhere. Why Medfield? What, what brought you here? Well, part of it is uh, my wife's family. They kind of settled here um, in, when she was in high school. So actually, her brothers, my brother-in-laws, they actually went to Medfield High School, um, and she she ended up going to Belmont. Um, but they've always been living here, so. Um, when, when we first, you know, kind of got together, I always spent a lot of holidays here and things like that and got to know the town and it's a beautiful place and so it made sense to get the grandkids back around uh, the grandparents to give us a little help too, um, but also because it's a beautiful town. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, as soon as you you come here, you realize the town's really beautiful. There's a lot of green open space around here, which yeah. you're going to be utilizing soon. Yes. That's one of the reasons why you're actually sitting here. It was uh, interesting how we met. You came, it was town meeting night. You came here yeah. and happened to bump into Audrey, and yes. you're looking for space. You're doing some, some workouts with people. Yes, yeah. Part of one of the things that, you know, as a, as a big part of my brand is the health and wellness. Helping health and wellness piece, and then also, you know, doing that at a community-based point. Um, you know, always giving back to the community by getting like-minded people together to just work out. Um, you know, especially with everything that happened with the pandemic, and you know, everyone gaining that COVID twenty. Um, everybody wants to work out and get in great shape now that things are opening back up, and it's you know, beach season. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Beach yeah. season is the most important season, yes. so you gotta gotta make sure you look <laughs> good. Gotta get right. Yeah. Yeah. What are some of the ways that people can like look out for these different workouts? I know that you were kind of experimenting with a couple different ideas. I pointed you over at the state hospital, uh, but what what are some of the things that you're? Yeah. So one of the first things that I'm going to be doing um, is actually just a 30 minute circuit training. Um, I'm actually going to be doing it at the state house. Thanks to you, uh, it gave me that great idea to do it at state hospital. Um, a lot of green grass. So what we're going to do there is just. Um, kind of combine a holistic approach to a circuit training. You know, try to do a little bit of meditation, a little bit of yoga, but also a little bit of running, agility, a little bit of football stuff as well, but it's for any and all athlete levels, um, you know, 13 and up. Um, so I'm gonna be doing two sessions, um, tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday. Um, the first session is gonna be at 6 a.m. So it's early rise, rise and grind is what I'm calling it. So you get up rise and grind for 30 minutes between 6 to 6.30, just 50 bucks. And then again, it's 6.45 to 7.15 is our second session. Um, and we're looking at some good numbers right now. And so that's why I'm going to do a little encore performance on Thursday. But typically, it's only, only going to be on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. That rise and grind are going to last about four weeks. And uh, if you finish it four weeks, you have good attendance, you get a little prize at the end. Nice. That's yeah. awesome. You know, uh, one of the things I loved was you were talking about fitness and, and just the the whole, the, as you said, the holistic approach to fitness, mm -hmm. the, the whole body. Um, one of the things you want to do with us here at Medfield TV, we're very excited about it. You're going to be bringing a, a f health and fitness show to yes. Medfield TV. So that, yes. that's going to be awesome. And one of the things you talked about was like smoothies and things yes. like that. Yes, one of the things I did, um, it's actually funny, when I first got into the NFL, um, I quickly learned the importance of taking care of your body. And it's, it's obvious, but more so than anything, it hurt my pocket when I first got into the NFL, and, I, and I'll tell why. When I first got into the NFL, um, they have a thing where they weigh you um, each week. You get weighed in, you're supposed to be at a certain weight. Um, so I ended up my first year in the NFL, first week getting weighed, I was two pounds over. And so it's $600 a pound for every pound you're over. So I was a little bit of a heavy set guy. If, if, if any of you guys remember when I played, I was a bigger guy and I played in a little you know, bruising style mentality. So it was hard for me to really learn how to keep my weight in check. And um, you know, one of the ways I did that was smoothies. Um, and a lot of it was trial and error. A lot of it was picking the brains of guys like Tom Brady and trying to figure out the best way and to really put together a good nutritionist meal plan. Um, so smoothies have, literally my entire time have been the reason why I've been able to stay such in, in such good shape. That's awesome. You're talking to a wrestler, so maintaining weight is something that I'm oh, like right. zoned in on, right? <laughs> I'm like, yep, absolutely, two pounds You're over. You're sweating right now like, thinking yeah, about exactly. it. <laughs> oh man, the scale is, is right. hot, you know? <laughs> but absolutely, uh, one of the things I think, you know, even as a wrestler too, smoothies was like another thing for us mm -hmm. that we've realized, like just drinking, being able to put 
the right stuff into a smoothie right. is, is a fantastic way to, to start your day, get your pre-workouts, your post-workouts, like all that stuff. Yes, it's a everything can be from a smoothie. And that's the one thing I learned. Through that trial and error process, I always thought, okay, let me just throw a bunch of fruits in. Let me throw a bunch of veggies in. So the more and more I started to learn, I'm like, okay, I have to have these fats in here. I have to have, you know, certain things in here that's gonna give me all the nutrients. So those little tidbits I learned throughout the NFL, um, I'm gonna be able to pass that on to the community. That's awesome. Let's talk actually about your your past and, and how you got to the to the seat you're sitting in right now, mm -hmm. is because I think you have a really interesting journey and mm -hmm. you have one that I think a lot of kids can actually learn from. Is you used football to gain an education and to really get a foothold uh, in, in life. And tell me about you know you're going to Notre Dame and, and making your way to that team and, and kind of your experience from there. Yeah. So uh, you know, growing up, <coughs> growing up with my mother, um, growing up in a single single parent home with my brother and I, just have an older brother. Uh, my mom is an actual retired police officer in my hometown. My brother's actually a state trooper now in Michigan. So kind of growing up, you know, in that environment, my mom always stressed the importance of education to us. Um, so I, you know, one of the reasons why I chose Notre Dame was, of course it was, you know, had great education, but I went on my official visit to visit the school and my mother just loved it. Um, and that was enough for me um, to make her happy. So I ended up going to the school and, and I immediately, one thing that you have to do is immerse yourself in the culture of any, any place you go to. So, you know, I always wanted to compete in the classroom as much as I competed off the field. I wanted to be known as someone um, that, you know, took that education part of it very serious. Um, so, you know, I was able to graduate in three and a half years from the University of Notre Dame and got a couple degrees from there. And, um, you know, I always knew right away if I, if I didn't have that opportunity to play in the NFL, um, that I had a great education to fall back on. That's awesome. And, you know, Medfield's actually a very good school system. It, yeah. it, a lot of these kids go to big academic schools, things like that. What did you do to separate yourself? You know, Notre Dame is no joke. That is a top school in, in the world, really, right? You're mm -hmm. talking top school in the nation. It's one of the top schools in the world. It, what was it that separated yourself that gave you the chance to get to a school like that? You know, I think a lot of it had to do with, um, you know, I, I never was afraid to do anything. You know, I was always okay with being different and also uncommon. You know, taking the uncommon route and t taking the road less traveled, so to speak. Um, I was always willing to do that. Even back when I was in sixth grade, I, I joined the chess club. You know, I was one of the first sixth graders to join the chess club. And even when I got to college at Notre Dame, I started doing stand-up comedy. Just randomly, you know, a bunch of my teammates and a bunch of my friends like, man, you're a funny guy. You should try to do stand-up. So I, you know, took my shot at doing stand-up comedy. So always, you know, you know, being okay with being vulnerable, um, being okay with being uncommon, and then also, <clears throat> you know, just really diversifying your portfolio. You know, you gotta be, you know, you always have to be doing the things like the extracurricular activities, but you also gotta volunteer your time at a soup kitchen. You gotta volunteer your time at the Humane Society. You gotta really go out there and, and help the most vulnerable among us. Um, and some, that was something that my mom really instilled in me. And so, you know, I pushed that same thing on my kids. You know, you know, lead by example, but always lead to help the most vulnerable. One of the situations for you that, you know, we talked a little bit about this, mm -hmm. um, your senior day. Mm -hmm. And you know you're you're playing BC, and you have one of the worst things happen to you, yep. right? Tell tell us about what what that senior day was like and, and how you came out of that. Yeah, so um, that was a tough time. So my, on senior day, um, so my last game, which they call senior day, a lot of the seniors know about that right now. Who just played their last um, season or their last games are coming up. So my last game at the University of Notre Dame, um, we were playing Boston College. Um, and I was having a great game in the first half. I was, you know, I'd rush for 100 yards and scored a touchdown. And, and I remember go, walking up to the, uh, walking into the locker room, and Coach Kelly, the head coach at Notre Dame, says to me, "We're gonna ride you the next half." So we come on the second half, and I'm like, I'm telling all my friends, I'm gonna have just this, this day that no one's ever gonna remember in Notre Dame history. This senior dominated his last game there. Um, so I, first play, the quarterback throws me a pass. I catch it and. The first thing the crowd does is they say, ooh, because it was a nice catch. I actually caught it one-handed. It was a bad pass, caught it one-handed. But then they all said, ooh, again, because a guy came out of nowhere and just took my knee out. And I ended up tearing my ACL, MCL, and LCL um, through the, to, toward the three major ligaments in my knee. Um, and 
I remember when it all happened, a lot of things went through my mind. One, immediately the first thing that went to my mind was that it wasn't over. I was always going to give myself the opportunity and whatever I did, I was gonna go hard at it. I was gonna do everything it took, whether it was you know putting together a great routine, nutrition, anything, whatever it was gonna take, I was gonna do it. Um, and right after that, it happened, right after the injury, the game was over, I asked Coach Kelly, can I speak to the team? And I was really emotional and I spoke to the team about my favorite quote. And it's from uh, the Count of Monte Cristo. And it goes, life is a storm. You'll bask in sunlight one moment and then be shattered on the rocks the next. But what you do when that storm comes is what makes you who you are. And then the fates will know you as you know yourself as a man. And so I remember saying that to them and you know, it was about the ebbs and flows of life, but more so that you don't have a choice but to fight back. Um, and so right after that happened, I went through a, you know, a, a grueling recovery process. And you know, when you get done your senior year, usually if you have an opportunity to play in the NFL, there's certain steps you gotta take. You gotta go to the combine. Um, you gotta, you know, you have an opportunity sometimes to play on you know, the senior bowl teams and all that stuff. So I was actually invited to the senior bowl. I was invited to the combine. But because of my injury, I was unable to do any of that. Um, and just, you know, by the grace of God and by, you know, the relationships that I've built with people and the way I've treated people and the way I've, you know, carried myself, um, one of my good friends, um, one of my best friends and college roommates, his dad was close with one of the owners of an NFL team, the Miami Dolphins. So when it was all over, you know, most, you know, when the draft had ended and I didn't get my name called and I didn't know if I was ever going to play in the NFL, um, I got a call from the owner of the Miami Dolphins, Stephen Ross, and he said, we're going to give you an opportunity to play here. Um, and so that's kind of how I backed on my way in the NFL was through relationship I gained through the University of Notre Dame. It's amazing, too, is if you look at your career, so you've experienced some things that players dream about, right? And there's, there's kids on the field right now that are like, man, I would kill to win a Super Bowl. I'd kill to score a touchdown. Yeah. And to, to come out of that from a serious injury and to have that, and like you said, like by the grace of God, like your roommate, his parents, is, and, and the relationships that you're building. I always tell people, you never know who you know, right? Mm -hmm. And my, my wrestlers that I coach and, and kids that I, I talk to is, is always – you always treat someone because you, you never know what right. opportunity is going to come of those. Exactly. And that's, uh, that's amazing. It speaks to your character that someone's willing to, yeah. to stand up for that. So right. that's, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And now, as a rookie, you're telling me that you're sta sitting up in the press box with the with Yeah, the owner so, so that was the best thing about it, too, was that I had an opportunity. Um, you know, that rookie season, I was just on injured reserve. So there was no possibility of me playing, no practicing. I was just, you know, there really to get healthy. And so every game, Stephen Ross would invite me to the suite to watch every game. So we'd be there and I'd, you know, help him understand what was going on in the game. And at the same time, I'd meet, you know, Alex Rodriguez and, um, you know, Senator Marco Rubio and Serena Williams and all of these different people that I'd meet. I'd make sure to get their number and stay in contact with them and nurture those relationships because I knew, just like my education, that that was going to be something great to fall back on. That's amazing. The, the thing is, too, is to be in that situation uh, as a rookie, you know, one of the things that I always think about, people, people look at from the outside in, you look at injured reserve as just time, right? right. It's like, oh, he's out for six weeks. Like, he'll be back on, in week seven, you know? Right. But what is the injury reserve really like? Like, what is that experience like for a player? Yeah, you know, it, it, it was a grind. It was, um, it was actually tough, you know, to, to, to know in the beginning, you know, when all these, you know, so the way the NFL works, when training camp comes around, you can have about 80 guys on the roster. Um, and so during that time, you know, when I was fresh out of college, to see all these different players come in and compete and me not have that opportunity, it, it made me even hungrier. Um, and then, you know, there was also, you know, veteran players that, that would have their own, you know, comments to say, you know, why aren't you out there? And you're not going to make the team if you're hurt. Like, them not even knowing that, you know, I have this relationship with the owner, but more so than that, that I had this uncommon hunger for what I wanted for myself and what I had to prove, even to myself. Um, 
so so that that was the biggest thing was I you know it was it would grind every day you know rehabbing having to rehab four or five times a day um, you know to the point to where there was literally like, me and another trainer we became like best friends because we knew each other so well like it was almost to the point I knew his wife I knew what was going on at home because we spent so much time together um, so it was really just a grind and just getting back but you start to see you know all those little small improvements um, you know there's light at the end of the tunnel. Now, you got traded at one point. Yep. That is, it has to be one of the weirdest experiences. And sometimes mm -hmm. you see it, like uh, in baseball right now, you see it where guys are getting pulled off the field mm -hmm. as they're getting traded. Right. What is that experience like? Your, your family just gets uplifted and shifted. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a different experience. Um, it, it's even, you know, it's tough for your family, of course. Um, and a lot of times, you know, when it happened to me, it, it was a little bit better because I was going to a place I was familiar with. You know, I was going back to Miami, so it, it was a little bit better for me, but I was leaving a place where I had met my wife, where I had met, you know, so many great people, and I had done, done so many things in this community. You know, I had, there was a, you know, a couple kids at Shriners Hospital in Boston that I had become really close with. So it was even tough for me to leave them, um, to know that I was leaving the community was the toughest part in a lot of ways. Um, but you know, you also know that you have another opportunity to affect another community, um, and so that's how I looked at it. And I had you know another opportunity to show that I belong in the NFL. Um, so that's how I always looked at. It. I always looked at it as another opportunity to prove myself, um, and another opportunity to help the most vulnerable among me. So I, I loved every opportunity. Obviously, we'll, we'll talk about it now. You're wearing the, the big ring yeah. and everything. I'm sure everyone can see the Little bling, bling on, <laughs> on TV at this point. Yeah. Let's talk about the New England Patriots. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, you know, people talk about, you know, do your job and, and you know, all Patriot the, way. the Patriot way <laughs> and all that. What is that experience really like? When, you're, when you walk in into the uh, Gillette Stadium, like, what is that experience like? You know, it was, it was, um, it, it was one of those things where, you know, being in that environment and being, um, you know, in such a competitive environment where every day you had to bring your best, um, the amount of energy that you just disperse every single day having to give your best, um, it brings the best out of you, but it takes a lot out of you as well. Um, so it was, you know, a lot of pressure, but at the same time, you, you really, um, because of the players you were playing with, especially so many great players like Tom and Gronk, it made you level up. You didn't have a choice. Um, and so that's why I always tell people, you know, the Patriot way is, you know, it's so much more than just like, you know, 16 week season or, you know, 17 week season. Now it's the off season. It's, um, you know, training camp, you know, when you get to practice against all these different teams and, you know, Bill was the first one to even bring that about where you go and practice in training camp against another franchise. Um, and so you, you get all these different opportunities to be put in competitive situations. And so you learn a lot quick about yourself and you learn a lot about, um, you know, your abilities and what you can do and how, you know, really what you can, how, how far you can take it. You know, that's the one thing. Sometimes when you go to different organizations, there's sometimes it feels like a finish line. You know what I mean? Like, that, okay, this is where we're probably going to end up. You know, to be with the team where they feel like there was no finish line and that anybody could play, that anybody had an opportunity to win and get on the team and, and uh, you know, have a big effect on the team was huge. One of the things they always say about Belichick, too, is that idea of, like, the plug-and-play athletes or even just, like, the, the, we talked about Malcolm Butler. Mm -hmm. It's like... That's yeah. the guy specifically for that play in that moment. Like you never knew when you were going to make the big play or when your impact was going to be felt. Mm -hmm. And you had that moment too. You had the four touchdown game. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. that was huge. What what is like an experience like that like to to know that you're you're like a legend in, yeah. in the area for yeah. a moment <laughs> like that, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it is. Um, it's great. You know, when you think about it, even on that day, um, you know, when it happened. You know, and I, and I keep talking about the same thing in terms of being hungrier and also proving that I belong. It was kind of both all in one. I was proving it to myself um, and I was proving it to all the fans, but I was also proving it to my teammates. Um, you know, and, and that being one of the first times, you know, me getting out there and being able to do that. And so I think that was one of the best parts was that, you know, just the journey 
from starting off ACL, torn, not knowing, backdoor my way into the NFL, to just 200 yards, four touchdowns, legendary day, um, something that I, I don't think anybody's going to be able to beat for a while. Um, and still hasn't. Um, so yeah. that type of performance. It's a validating um, experience, right? It is. It is. It really is. That's amazing. I, I can't even imagine, I mean, it, again, to that point of there's people who go their entire lives doing the right thing who still don't get into a position like you, don't get to experience that. So to, to even just have that moment is, is something awesome. To play with a player, though, like mm -hmm. Tom Brady, I mean, it, Arguably, and you're not going to hear many arguments here in New England, right? He's the greatest of all I think time. Cam. He's, no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's he's the greatest of all time. Yeah. He's you yeah. know. He's so awesome. What is playing with him like? Is that you know they talk about his fire, his tenacity. You see him on the sideline. Like, what is that experience like? You know what I? Um, that was one thing I, I I was very smart and intentional about. Everywhere I went, I made sure to get around the greats pick their brain, get around them, sit behind them, whatever it took. So one of the first things I did was sit behind Tom Brady. And just watching him in the meeting rooms and just, they'd be talking about something with the old lineman and I'd hear him whisper it, you know, because he knew every single thing that was going on. And, I, and whenever he'd take notes, I'd take notes. Um, just p watching him compete with himself every day made me better. I always felt like, you know, there was always something more I could be doing because of all he was doing, everything he was putting into it. And I learned so many, so many great things from him. And I always tell people I came from the Tom Brady Leadership Academy because one of the things, like, I remember we had one time in the off season, we do kind of like a combine training where you come in and you test. You don't test 40 times, like 40 yard dash, but you, you test in all the different areas. And one of the things you test is a shuttle, the short 20 yard shuttle. And Tom, you know, you know, the greatest player of all time and the greatest quarterback of all time, there's no reason for him to have to do the shuttle. And I remember he kept doing it. And I'm like, after the third time, I remember whispering to someone, why is Tom still doing the shuttle? He's trying to beat his personal record. And he kept doing it. And then next thing you know, it's the whole team surrounded around him cheering Tom on to beat his personal record in the shuttle. And that's the type of hunger and uncommon competitiveness that you have to have with yourself. So that, and then, you know, seeing his routine, um, you know, I could tell you right now, what time is it? I could tell you what Tom's doing right now um, because that's the type of routine he had. You know, he'd do little tweaks of his routine here and there. Like anybody, you know, you do a time audit, make sure your, your routine's right. But he had the same routine every single day. And to do that for 18, 19, you know, all this time, um, it just gave me a, just a different perspective about what it, what it takes to be the best, to be the very best. You know, how much you have to give up, how much you have to sacrifice. You know, the biggest way you can show love, the, the only way you show love is through sacrifice. You know, so he just showed his love for the game, his love for his teammates, but how much he sacrificed every single day to be his best. So that's why always, every day I wanted to give my best because of what he was given. He gave so much of himself, all I could do was, you know, give all of myself too. So um, I loved, loved playing with him. It was awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. And then obviously, like, you played with other guys. I mean, we, we could talk about the individuals that you got to play with for, yeah. forever and ever. Right. But, you know, what is the, what it was walking out of the NFL? It, mm. it, it, it's got to be hard that you worked your entire life up to the point of getting to this moment. Yeah. And now you're done and you walk away from it. Mm. What made you walk away, you know, and how hard of a decision was that? Yeah, so it was tough because my last time actually playing was in 2017. And... The last time I was actually on the field, I was with the Jacksonville Jaguars, and it was the first day of training camp. And I had a phenomenal practice. I wasn't, you know, I was someone that was in a rotation, but I wasn't looked at as the best player on the team or someone that was going to make a huge impact on the season. But they knew that, you know, they had a good player, you know, obviously because of what I had done and what I had shown in the league. Right after practice was over, the head coach said, Jonas, break us down. So I broke us down and I remember saying to myself, this is gonna be a good year. I was in the best shape of my life. Last year, you know, year seven, and like I talked about, every year I had learned different things about nutrition and my training and what it was gonna take to get my body right. I knew it all, or at least I thought I did. Um, so I, so after the very next practice, the second training camp practice, in the very beginning of, of warm-ups, I tear my quad. 
in warm-ups. So that was the last time I stepped on the field. Um, tore my quad, you know, and quad, you know, one of those injuries, you know, soft tissue or, you know, muscle injury that you, it takes you forever to recover. You know, everybody has their own recovery time with that. Um, so when I was recovering and, you know, pushing my body to get back ready for the next opportunity, I injured myself again. And so it was through the through that process of, you know, having a battle rehab and, you know, through all of that, I said, you know, maybe, um, you know, when I was doing the rehab part, I wasn't exactly 100 percent sure I wouldn't be playing again. I wasn't sure if you know, I was hanging out my cleats for good. But then I got a call um, from the mayor of my hometown and she said that they were going to they were getting ready to do an implosion of the Pontiac Silverdome, Pontiac, Michigan, where I'm from, where the Detroit Detroit Lions used to play. So I jumped at the opportunity to speak at the implosion. So I ended up flying out there and, you know, I did a great job speaking and the mayor pulled me to the side and said, I actually need your help with something else. We're trying to um, start a legislative initiative to open a youth center for the kids in the city of Pontiac. And they hadn't had youth programming and, or a youth center since I had been there. And that was, you know, a big part of my childhood and what helped me get to the point I got to. Um, so I said, of course. Um, so I started doing commercials and town halls and whatever it took, whatever the mayor needed me to do, I was there and I was speaking on behalf of the city and making sure the kids got this uh, youth center. So the millage passed, we got state funded dollars to open up a youth center. So after that was over, I saw, you know, I spoke to the mayor and I thought, you know, job's done. I did what you want me to do. I'm on my way. And she stopped me and said, I actually want you to run the place. Do you mind being one of the directors and helping us get this thing off the ground? So um, I, I did that for a year. I helped get it off the ground, you know, brought in some really great programs that were, you know, innovative and new and brought in some new partners. And, you know, once that thing became, you know, it grew, I was like, this is my time to, you know, say, say see you later and thank you for the opportunity. So, you know, it was kind of like, you know, birthing a baby a little bit. Uh, um, you start with this small thing that, you know, a lot of people try to help and, you know, you go through this process and then you look at it and you're like, wow, you really did that. It was almost bigger than anything I've done on the field. Um, and so it's things like that, that, that um, why education was such a big part of who I am. Um, because I wanted to be uncommon, I wanted to be different. And um, getting that opportunity to be a director of a youth center, I, I would have never gotten that opportunity just being a football player. Uh, so it's it was a, great. It, it must have made it an easier decision knowing that you had something so important to yeah. give back to, um, to be involved in that way, you know, to go and, and speak on those levels, to see that, hey, there's a life beyond football, like I can move on right. from here. Um, that's it, it, incredible. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's an incredible journey. It, it wasn't easy, though. I want yeah. to I want, I want to see. Oh, no, like it, it seemed no. like it was just, it was the washing no, of the hands, right? It, was, <laughs> it, it, wasn't, it wasn't easy walking away from the game, you know, mentally, physically. Uh, and it wasn't easy, um, you know, even with my relationships with my wife and everything. You, you, everything's strained when you decide to call it quits on something like that. When you decide to... Um, you know, start a new path and you, your dream is kind of over. But then you realize there's a new dream. And that dream is probably bigger than anything you've ever dreamed. And it's being, you know, affecting change and uniting and inspiring people in a way that I never did on the field. So, um, you know, that's why I felt good about doing it, but it was tough. It was tough on me mentally. and. You know, it, it's still tough now. Even when training camp season rolls back around and, and I know I still can play <laughs> or I feel like I still can until I take a hit. But uh, it's, it, it's, it's always going to be something that's always lingering in the back of my mind until I'm probably 40. But um, it, it was good, like you said, to walk away from the game knowing that I was doing something for my community. That's a, a, amazing, too. Is it, it, you think about it. If you walked around the streets today, you're probably the best in shape person on the street, right? right. And like, right. that's the thing is like, <laughs> I feel like if I was if I was in that shape, I'd be like, I could do anything, right? right? And right. it's, but that it speaks to the level that you were at and and what you were doing uh, of how hard it is to be an NFL yeah. player and, so. and to the special 
athletes that they, they mm. really are the top 1% of the 1% make yeah. it to that level. Yeah. And uh, and not only did you make it to that level, but you excelled and, and you got yourself right. a nice little <laughs> ring to, to right. prove it too. That's what they say, when you when you get done, you either have, have a ring or you don't. Yeah. Um, and so I'm, I'm blessed enough to have this. Now, what's the plan now? Going forward, wh what's Jonas Gray doing now? So now um, I own my own consulting firm. Um, I'm about, it's kind of a startup, so I'm five months in. But this, like I've talked about, it's been a culmination of all my years of experience and all the different things that I've learned through trial and error, through, you know, real learned experience on the ground. Um, you know, so I, I consult in a number of different areas, you know, whether it be health and nutrition, whether consulting athletes on, you know, getting to college, you know, consulting athletes on, you know, ACT, SAT. But most of what I do um, is really, you know, try to unite and inspire people through helping them with their routine. You know, everything is about having a holistic habit in the form of a routine. You know, something that you do every single day, dependable rules that you created for yourself that will keep you accountable every single day. Um, so I talk about all the different things. I talk about, you know, the different parts of being holistic in your routine, having meditation, having the mind, body, spirit, all the different things that come with that. Um, you know, I talk a lot of, to people about their faith. Um, you know, going to the University of Notre Dame, you know, I wasn't a practicing Catholic, um, you know, I wasn't a Catholic, I was, you know, Southern Baptist the way I grew up, but, you know, having that opportunity to be closer to my faith and being able to go to the grotto and, you know, light a candle, you know, all of those things I learned about myself through personal experiences about faith, about your mental and, and, and about, you know, your health and wellness and what's in your spirit, I, I helped to pass all that stuff on um, in a number of different ways, but uh, just giving back. Now, you were saying before, I think uh, you have a client now, uh, mm. someone that people might be familiar with. You, it's, it's not often that you get to start your uh, clientele with it. Was it Adrian Peterson you have? Adrian his? Peterson is one of my clients. Pretty incredible. I yes, mean. yes. So one of the things I'm working with Adrian Peterson on is helping him get uh, sponsorships for his foundation and donations. So that's one thing I do. You know, former athletes or guys that are in the NFL, you know, through my work, um, working with nonprofits and things like that, I help them connect them. I help connect them with, um, you know, different corporate sponsors that want to give money to them. So um, Adrian Peterson is one guy I work with, Mike Evans. Um, you know, there's a number of different athletes um, that, that I'm starting to do things with. So having him as a first client is good. Um, I think it just, it, it goes to show, you know, for myself, just the relationships, relationships that I've built, but also, um, you know, the rapport that I've built with guys across all sports and across all ecosystems, whether you're activists, whether you're a politician, whether, just like I said, I had those opportunities to meet all those people when I was in Stephen Ross's suite. Um, you know, getting those opportunities and nurturing those relationships and, and leveraging them now in order to do good. It's incredible. Jonas, uh, thank you so much. Is there anything else you want, you want to bring, bring to our attention, something that we should be aware of that you're doing here in town? Uh, besides the Rise and Grind 30-minute circuit training um, that starts tomorrow, we're going to go at 6 a.m., um, right at the uh, State Hospital. That'll be the first session. We'll go from 6 to 6.30, and the next session will go from 6.45 to 7.15. And like I said, it's just going to be a culmination of mind, body, spirit getting all of that into a 30 minute workout to start your day, rise and grind, give you energy, get, give you a great start to your day, start as the catalyst to you having a great, great summer. That's awesome. Yep. Thank you so much for joining us Thanks today. Thanks for having me, Brett. Absolutely, and thank you so much for watching a discussion with. Catch us next time.